So TLC is this Sunday on the WWE Network. That's right. The last thing we needed is another secondary pay-per-view before Survivor Series. But that's exactly what you're getting. So what should we expect from WWE TLC 2017? What are we going to get out of this show? Well, let me tell you something. We're getting a kickoff show featuring, among other things, a Drew Gulak PowerPoint presentation, a throwaway women's match with Sasha Banks and Alicia Fox, and Peter Rosenberg and or Sam Roberts being the annoying sellout twats that we all know them to be. Which, when you combine all that crap up, equals one kickoff show I won't be watching. If this isn't an indication of how this night is going to go, we have two cruiserweight matches on this card. That's right, the division this company really doesn't give a crap about has two matches on this card. A cruiserweight tag match. A cruiserweight tag match is on the main card of WWE TLC. Like, who actually wants to see this? Now, man, Marcus Smart can't wait for this cruiserweight tag match. There's going to be flips. There's going to be kicks. There's going to be all types of bumps and high spots. And it's going to be awesome. Really? Yes. Of course I'm excited. It's cruiserweight action, baby. Really? No. Screw you, WWE. How dare you ruin the cruiserweight division? That's what I thought. And the second cruiserweight match is, of course, a Raw rematch, because why would we save anything for the pay-per-views? Enzo's rematch for his old cruiserweight title against Kalisto, the guy who apparently, if he wins this Sunday, will become the new cruiserweight champion, which is really awkward and odd, considering when he said that, he had the cruiserweight championship over his shoulder on Raw. But nonetheless, the whole premise of this is so stupid. You do what you did with Enzo, you have him win the strap, then you sit there and turn his character, all so you can immediately undercut his damn heat because you want Kalisto to win because you want to create good vibes and feelings around Eddie Guerrero's birthday, so that way we can come right back and have Enzo probably get this strap at TLC. For what reason? We undercut the heat for no damn good reason. We have Kalisto win the strap really honestly, for no damn good reason, and in large part because of the stupidity of the company for writing themselves into a hole where they couldn't have Neville get his damn rematch for the strap. So that way we can have Enzo win it back, and ultimately it's this 50-50 booking bullcrap is why nobody really gets over in the WWE. Just stupid. Can't stand Enzo Amari. Learn how to wrestle, you jerk. Looking like a Chester Cheetah rip-off wannabe. Unbelievable. Certified G, my foot. But, but the only thing that we need out of the Cruiserweight Division, Neville, I understand it's bad. It's terrible. And ultimately, if you go to New Japan and you wrestle with, alongside, or against Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, it will surely be awesome because it's Japanese wrestling. And that's the best motherfucker wrestling in the world. But we also need you in WWE. This cruiserweight division is so bad. And without you, it just won't be at the Neville level. Neville, please come back. Please come back. Unless you go to New Japan. Then disregard everything that I just said. Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt one more time. Because why not? Did we really need this match again? Do we need this match again? Hopefully something happens come Sunday where we don't get this match again. Because I have to ask at this point in time, whether you're a Bray backer or a Finn fuck, does anybody care about this match? Anybody? Don't look at the dick stone, baby. I'm getting ready for Bound for Glory. Woo! The Cowboy James Storm. Now that's something everybody should care about. Bray Wyatt versus Finn Balor. The real question we should be asking is, who wants to walk with Elias? Me! 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 Oh, hello there. My name is Karen. Have you seen my carrots and oats? Bray Wyatt, I tell you what, I tell you a thousand times, cover up those bullies! And Finn Balor, who gives a crap? I've seen ladies who look bigger and better than him. Oh, carrots and oats, got to go by! 
So apparently Bray Wyatt is questionable to wrestle Sunday against Finn Balor. Could you blame him? Well, I know deep down what happened. If it's not him trying to avoid this feud, it's because he put on his dad's old IRS gear and he went up to JoJo and he said, <laughs> Your taxes have gotten into the arrears, so now I must eat your rear until I have wiped your tax debt clean from your butthole with my tongue. What? You don't, that's not how people get meningitis? Well, I believe it. I think that's how we got it because everything about this story is stupid, so why wouldn't this be too? And in fact, this is the most believable thing about it. Bray Wyatt, eater of ass. We have established it. And frankly, wouldn't you eat JoJo's butthole? I'm just saying. It's not like the brothers that like the ladies to lick their buttholes because as nasty and freaky as the white boys can be, that's just weird. And that is a no-go exit-only zone. I'm just saying. What? We're We're live. We're live. Ah, God damn it, we're professionals here. The WWE has even managed to make me, me, Marcus Smart, not care about Finn Balor. What a travesty. And obviously, there is only one correct answer in this particular case, and that answer is, hell no, nobody cares about this crap. And if you want my thoughts on this Sister Abigail versus Darth Pumpkin match Sunday at WWE TLC, go watch my video on this channel from earlier this week talking about how this is the worst feud I've seen in WWE in some time, because it is. Oh, baby, I can't wait for Sunday night. Asuka is going to debut at TLC, and it's gonna be awesome because nobody and i mean nobody in that raw women's division in that women's locker room can touch asuka personally i wish i could touch asuka because i know every time she wrestles i touch myself and i will be someday yeah uh, she better beat emma within an inch of her life this better be a total and complete skull match you know what Marcus Smart is right. That's right, Asuka. Beat Emma's ass. And for all of you that are all giggly tits about Asuka debuting on Raw, just keep this in mind. Give them time, and they'll screw her up too. Now, Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, this is going to be a splooge fest. Alexa, so hot. I want to touch her, honey. In a non-harassment kind of way, people, we have to be conscientious of the world that we live in in the 21st century. But I'm just saying, I'm not saying, but I'm saying, Marcus Smart would like to touch and Google that hiney. And touch myself, too. But more importantly, Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, what a showdown, what a matchup. And I know I'm going to have a happy ending after this, no matter who wins the match. There was a while where I legitimately forgot Mickey James was even with the company, let alone which brand she was on, and it happened to be Raw. At least WWE has now come to the realization that they've got Mickey James. So why not freaking use her? Oh my God, imagine that. And I'll say this. If Sasha's bald-headed ass can win that belt against Alexa Bliss, then Mickey James can and she should. It's been bad enough to see this company recently squander the return of the Dudleys and in large part piss away the return of the Hardys. Let's not continue to bungle the Mickey James situation. Mickey needs to win and come Sunday, if you want to give me some good vibes from this show, Mickey James should win. Because frankly, you could just put the belt right back on Alexa Bliss any damn ways. Yeah, the shield is back together. Oh, great googly tits indeed. I love the shield. Sierra, Hotel, India, Echo, Lima, Delta, Shield. Let's put our fists together. Everybody fist, baby. I love the shield. But fuck you, Roman Reigns. You still suck. And you know what? I can't believe I'm going to do this, but I'm going to give Marcus Smart some credit here because he hit on something. Look, I've already talked about on this channel how I'm not buying this S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion because it's ultimately about a couple of things. One of those being Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose failed as babyfaces on their own, so we got to go with the nostalgia crap to try and get them back over the right way. And ultimately, most importantly, this was about killing time for Roman Reigns and trying to get ultimately more people to not boo Roman Reigns as much because you want him to get it caught up in the nostalgia 
nostalgia of a nostalgia act that isn't quite that nostalgic in large part because it's not even that old and truly honestly wasn't all that particularly great to begin with. So now we get this match. The Shield versus the World as I'll call it. Three members of the Shield versus The Miz, The Bar, and Braun Strowman and freaking Kane. Five versus three. So either you get out of this a really competitive match that makes the Shield look incredible and makes the team of five look freaking stupid, or you get a really competitive match where the same thing happens. The Shield looks awesome, all three of them, and they make the five heels look freaking stupid. Like at this point in time, I wouldn't be surprised if they had the dang Shield go over here. And just think about this. This is the main event of a pay-per-view. A randomly thrown together shield reunion to try and do something with these three guys, but most importantly, kill Tide for Roman and try to get him less booed, in large part because we don't have anything for our freaking Universal Champion to do because it is not in his contract to appear at this show. And then we take... The other team, which is a random hodgepodge of five people thrown freaking together, so that way we can get a S.H.I.E.L.D. showcase. This is what the WWE is today. It's a bunch of horse shit. And even thinking about the whole premise of the show, it's called TLC. Tables, ladders, chairs, throw it in. Oh my. Yeah, this match, this three-on-five tag match, is the only match on the entire card as of this recording that has any type of special stipulation involving tables, ladders, and or chairs in it. If you are going to have the stipulation of the pay-per-view be tables, ladders, and chairs, then shouldn't several of these matches on the card be built up to enough of a point where you can actually justify the name and the stipulation of a freaking pay-per-view? This is stupid! Because ultimately, this company is stupid! And when you look at this card, who looks at this card, looks to Sunday, and thinks that this show's gonna go well? Give me a break.